All right, here in 13.4, I want to start by asking you to take a look at these two equations and do what you need to do to figure out what theta would be. Um, kind of the, the basis of, like that question is the basis of what we're doing here in this section. So hopefully you uh, broke out your unit circle and you took a look on the unit circle uh, you looked around. Most likely you looked up here in the first quadrant because that's where we're used to looking. Uh, it's the first quadrant we ever started working with, I'm sure, in our math careers. And you saw at 30 degrees, or pi over 6, there's this guy. It was root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. And you said, well, this, this angle has a sine of 1 half. So this angle has got to be 30 degrees, or pi over 6 radians. And if you come down to this one, uh, you look at your unit circle and saw there's this guy right here. It's uh, 1 half comma root 3 over 2. And you said, well, this has a sine of root 3 over 2, so the answer to this equation must be 60 degrees, or pi over 3 radians. And uh, you're right, those, uh, those are the correct answers. Um, the, the thing about these equations is, uh, is they actually have lots and lots, uh, an infinite uh, number, actually, of solutions. Uh, so like this angle over here, uh, 150 degrees, it also has a sine of 1 half. And so 150 degrees would also be a solution to this equation. Not only that, but we could start at 30 degrees and we could go all the way around and uh, find another angle. This angle right here, um, let's see, 390 degrees, it also has a sine of 1 half, 360 plus another 30. Um, and you can imagine I, I could go over here to 150 and go around in a full circle. I could find another angle that has a sine of 1 half, and, and on and on it goes. Okay. Um, well, for this new topic, that, that's kind of a problem, because uh, what we're going to introduce are, are inverse trigonometric functions. Um, in previous sections, we might have said, what's the sine of 30 degrees, and said that the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. Okay? And that's all there was. There was only one answer for that. Sine of 30 degrees only had one output, uh, 1 half. No, no choice about it no multiple solutions, that was it. But now with these multiple solutions, that causes a problem for this new function that we want to use. Um, this new function, uh, the first new function at least, is the inverse sine of x. Uh, the inverse sine of x just basically uh, does this, it asks this question. Right? The question here was, what angle, what angle has a sine of 1 half? So if we were to say the inverse sine of 1 half, make that a little bolder, that's what it's asking. It's saying what angle has a sine of 1 half? Okay. Well, we, the fact that we have lots and lots of answers, an infinite number of answers for this uh, expression, it's a problem. right? Because we want this sine, uh, inverse sine of x, we want this to be a function. And if you remember about functions, uh, it can only have one output for every input. And since for this input, one half, we found all sorts of answers. All sorts of answers like 30, and 150, and 390, and any other angle that's coterminal with 30 or 150 that causes an issue for us because we, we don't want to have multiple outputs. Uh, so uh, hopefully you see why that's an issue, we, why, uh, why we don't like that. It makes it not a function, and we want it to be a function. So that needs fixing. We need to fix that somehow. Um, so here's how we do that. Basically, right now, you're able to, if, if I just ask the question, what angle has a sine of 1 half, you can say lots and lots of angles, and you can go around and around and around the circle. So the way we're going to fix it is we're just going to agree to not allow outputs or answers to come from just anywhere. 
we're going to limit it. We're going to say only in this little part of the circle are we going to find answers to this. So, um, you know, should we should we limit it to here or here, or here, or here? Or, you know, where should we limit it? Uh, and and to be fair and honest, you could limit it to whatever you want. Uh, you know, if 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 we were at the point of history where we were trying to decide uh, where to limit these, well, we might have a big debate. But it's been decided, and I'll try and explain why, uh, or my at least made up story of why. Well, first. Uh, part of that, we'll limit it to the first quadrant. That won't be everything, but uh, that'll be where we start. Because we like the first quadrant. Um, the first graphs we ever saw as, as little children were in the first quadrant. right? Things were always positive. Time was positive. Distance was positive. Uh, it, it was all positive, and everything was, was hunky-dory. Uh, so the first quadrant, we like. All right. The problem with just the first quadrant is think about the values of sign that you get only in the first quadrant. Um, think about the values of sine you use. You got one half. You got this. Forty-five degrees would be the square root of two over two. Square root of three over two. Uh, for ninety degrees, it would be a, a sine of one. But that's not all the signs that are out there, right? So I could conceivably ask a question that that you wouldn't be able to find an answer to in this quadrant. So we extend it. We say, well, we also need negative sine values, which we can find in the third and fourth quadrant. And if we shade in the third quadrant, that would look weird. Why would we have two uh, non-touching quadrants? So how about the fourth quadrant? Because they touch. So we, the, four, the first quadrant, because we like it. The fourth quadrant, because it touches the first quadrant. It makes sense. So now we have this range uh, on, the, on the unit circle that covers all the sign values. Okay. Uh, so that's... That's great. So if I ask you the inverse sine of 1 half, now we limit it to, to just this range, and you'll only find one possible answer to this question. Only one angle within this range that has a sine of 1 half, and that would be 30 degrees, or pi over 6 radians. Okay. And I can continue to ask you questions. Uh, the inverse sine of root 2 over 2. Okay, so within these two quadrants, find an angle that has a, a sine of root 2 over 2. That would be 45 degrees, or pi over 4 radians. Um, so now I'm going to ask one that you will almost definitely get wrong, uh, and then I'll explain why it's wrong. Uh, so I'll ask the inverse sine of negative root 3 over 2. Okay, so only in this range, find an angle that has a sign of negative root 3 over 2. So you're looking, and you come down here, and you see this angle right there. Uh, this angle has a sign of negative root 3 over 2. So you might want to write down here uh, 300 degrees, but that's wrong. Okay, and let me explain why. Uh, instead, I'm going to just reveal what we're going to do instead. Instead of going around and, and getting to 300 degrees, we're going to start here at 0 and go down in the negative direction to negative 60 degrees. Negative 60 degrees. Uh, and here's the, the reason for that. Uh, it's because that makes it so all of the, the answers come from this uh, continuous range. There's no gaps. Okay, Let me show you the alternative. If you were to to say 300 degrees, that means you had to go all past these options, okay? Then you had to pass all of these guys here uh, that we're not allowing to be uh, in the, the, the answer options, and pass all of these. You're passing this huge gap to get all the way back around to finally some more answers that we can use. So it's just as, there'd be this big gap between our positive sign. Uh, answers, I guess, the angles that have positive sign values and the angles that have negative sign values. Rather than going all the way around the circle, we'll just start here and go down here in the negative direction to find signs that are negative and go up here to find angles that have signs that are positive. Okay, so for inverse sine, we're going to stay between negative, I'm going to say negative pi over 2, so for the inverse sine of a value of, say, x, we are going to stay between negative pi over 2 and pi
positive pi over 2. All right. So the let's kind of recap this whole thing. I, I started by asking you, find an angle that has a sine of 1 half. Uh, and you did it. You found an angle 30. Then we thought, well, th there's more angles that have a sine of 1 half, and so this has lots of answers. All right. And that's going to be a problem if we're going to try and make a new function out of this question. And that's what we did. We said the inverse sine of x uh, is going to have uh, lots of answers. The inverse sine of 1 half uh, had lots of different answers, 30 and 150 and, and so on and so on. So he said we're going to limit that. We're going to limit it to the first and the fourth quadrant so that we get angles uh, that, that cover the full range of, of possible uh, sine values. So we can ask the inverse sine of a positive from 0 all the way to 1. And we can ask the inverse sine of negative numbers, the inverse sine of 0 all the way down to negative 1. So that covers it. There is no sine value that is not within this range. So every possible question has an answer. Okay. Um, the kinds of questions that don't have answers now, uh, something you might not have thought of, is like, what's the inverse sine of negative 1? 1.5. So you you look down here and you, you look for a negative 1.5 and obviously it's not written there and, and you get down here to the, the very bottom of the unit circle and what you have here is the largest well I guess smallest because it's negative the smallest negative or the, the smallest sign value you will uh, come across and that's negative 1. That is it. That That is the absolute uh, bound of, uh, of negative sign values. You can't get past it. You can't get bigger than negative 1. So this is undefined. This doesn't have an answer. This is not what we call in the domain. This is not in the domain of inverse sign. And you might ask, what's the domain? The domain is just all the possible uh, inputs. Okay, so uh, all the possible inputs for inverse sine would be it would range from negative one to positive one, okay. and nothing smaller than negative one, nothing bigger than positive one would make any sense. Okay, well let's move on to the inverse cosine. Okay, so now you have the the basic understanding that when I say inverse cosine, I mean what angle has this cosine. What is the inverse cosine of 1 half? You look for an angle that has a cosine of 1 half. Uh, and uh, I think like 95% of people would look in the first quadrant, find this angle, find a cosine of 1 half, and say 60 degrees. It's 60 degrees. And that's right. 60 degrees is indeed the inverse cosine of 1 half. But you could go over here. Uh, you could go to 300 degrees or... Uh, if you're thinking in terms uh, like this guy here, you might say negative 60 degrees. So again, we have so many answers for this question, and we don't want that. We want to limit it. Uh, so let's see how we're going to do that. How are we going to limit the answers that we can give for inverse cosine? Well, like I said, we like the first quadrant, so we'll do that. Okay, so think about the kinds of cosines you're going to get in the first quadrant. You're going to get positive cosines. The horizontal is the cosine, and uh, you're going to get positive cosines in the first quadrant. So what other kinds of cosines are there? There are negative cosines. Where do we find those? Well, the horizontal is, is uh, cosine, and the horizontal is negative in the second and third quadrants. It would be funny to use the third quadrant. That would be odd. So we'll use the second quadrant. And that works out really nicely, They're kind of nicer than, than the inverse sine does. This, If we go from 0 to pi, we will find angles with every possible cosine imaginable. Um, and that's it. Now you, now you have the full range of the inverse cosine. The inverse cosine of x will range from negative, or sorry, not negative, but 0 to pi. So anywhere in there, acceptable for, for answers for the inverse cosine. So if I were to ask you the inverse cosine of negative root 3 over 2, and maybe 
you'll throw some parentheses there. The inverse cosine of negative root 3 over 2, you look within this range only, between 0 and pi, uh, for an angle that has this cosine. So we go way over here. This guy right here has an inverse or has a cosine of negative root 3 over 2. That's 150 degrees, or uh, 5 pi over 6. All right, and and that would that would be it. And we have the full uh, you know, every possible cosine is covered there. And cosine like sine, uh, you can only find values from negative one, right? You can have a negative 1 cosine way out here, but no way to get past negative 1. can't have negative 2 or negative 3 or anything like that. And then we have a cosine of 0. We have a cosine of 1 half. We have a cosine of 1. Uh, and that covers uh, the full range, okay, or the actually the domain of the inverse cosine. Um, OK, uh, now the last one, we'll talk about the inverse tangent. This one's a little trickier. So if I were to ask you the inverse tangent of 1, remember from uh, previous lessons that the tangent is equal to the sine over the cosine. Uh, so if you're looking for an angle that has the tangent of 1, you're looking for an angle where, we, where you take the sine and divide by the cosine, and you get 1. Okay, so the sine divided by the cosine should give you 1. The only, to get, only way to get 1 when you do division is to divide you know, something by itself. That's the only way to get 1. So we're looking for a place where the sine and the cosine are the same. That's what pi over 4, or 45 degrees. So that'd be right, pi over 4, 45 degrees, whatever you like. Uh, I'm going to start talking in terms of radians most often. All right, so that's great. We understand what we're looking for. Uh, within this first quadrant, which you can imagine we're about to limit it to, at least in, in part. Uh, but then if, if we look in the, the fourth quadrant, we find another angle that has a cosine of positive 1. This one has, uh, it would be negative root 2 over 2 divided by negative root 2 over 2. So that's the sine and the cosine uh, of, of this angle right here, of uh, 5 pi over 4. Uh, so we see we, that we need to, to limit this. So we can get positive tangents here and here, because positive divided by positive, negative divided by negative. And you can imagine we get negative tangents here and here. All right. So we need to pick another quadrant that's going to give us negative tangents so that we can ask the question like inverse tangent of negative root 3 and, and be able to find an angle that has that tangent. Um, and you might think, let's use the second quadrant, because... Uh, it's kind of nicer to go from 0 to pi than from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Okay, But if you were to choose the second quadrant, um, well, it wouldn't be the way that it is. The way that it is is the first and the fourth. Okay, And uh, so you might ask why, and so here's, here's why. If we were to choose the first and the second quadrant, look what will happen right in the middle at 90 degrees. Okay. Um, what is going to be the tangent of 90 degrees? Okay, so this is a little bit of an aside. The tangent of 90 degrees will be the sine over the cosine. So the sine of 90 degrees is 1. The cosine is 0. And so 1 divided by 0, that's undefined. Um, so here's what's happening. We'll, we'll have all these angles here that have tangent values that exist. Uh, you know, tangent of, uh, I think, root 3 over 3, and tangent of 1, tangent of square root of 3. And then we'll get uh, this non-existent tangent. So I'll have like this blip, this blank spot, this gap, before we, we just kind of have to skip over that and say, OK, let's talk about these angles over here. Uh, and you know, these, these will have negative tangent values. Um, so I have this weird little gap thing, and that would just be strange. So rather than have that blip in the middle, if we go down here, now we'll, we'll range from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and, uh, and let's see what happens in the middle there. At 0 degrees, what's the tangent? The tangent of 0 degrees would be 0 over 1, and that's 0, and that's not undefined. So we don't have any weird gaps uh, in the, you know, in this range. 
So we'll use that one. We'll use negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So the tangent of x, that's going to be not enough room. The inverse tangent of x will go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, just like the inverse sine. All right. So that is a rather long explanation of the inverse trig values that you the functions you could uh you know your book tells you that um all well, this information it, it says that the the output for the inverse sine comes from here for inverse cosine it comes from here inverse tangent it comes from here uh but then th there's no explanation behind it and then they just start using it and it, I don't know it, it loses a lot of its meaning now, hopefully, what we have is this like really meaty understanding that uh, what the inverse sine means is I'm looking for an angle that has this sine. What the inverse cosine means is I'm looking for a, an angle that has this cosine, and that for the inverse tangent has this tangent. Um, and so when we go to use it in the practice problems, I think it'll make a lot more sense. Okay, um, so that's the basics of it. We're, we're going to set up problems. Uh, like real world problems, arbitrary uh, uh, problems, made up problems that uh, will require us to find angles that have certain tangents and cosines and sines and stuff like that. Um, but I think you, you get a, a, a better understanding from an explanation like this. So thank you for watching, and, uh, and I will see you in the practice problems video.